if you go out and look for a human, you're going to spend on average 10 hours finding a closer. And there's a 33% chance that that closer is the right closer for you, which means on average, based on statistics, you're going to have to go through three to find your one. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the podcast. I am your host, Desmond Dixon, and welcome to the campfire. I am here with the always amazing Heather Stafford. What's up, Heather? Hey, y'all. What's up, guys? Boom. Hey, yo, today we got a we got a fun one for the guys today, right? Like we're we're gonna talk about some some math, right? Because you know, as, as Heather yeah. always always says, you know, business is just great math, right, Heather? Good business is nothing more than good math. Boom. And so we're going to keep it super simple today, guys, as simple as possible for all you audio audio listeners and not watching the video. Um, and we're going to stick with one particular piece of math, which is the economics behind the offer, right? Like the math behind a good offer. Okay. And today we're going to use a great example because as you guys may, may know, I am going to actually spin off um, something from my consultancy into a recruiting agency um, something that's more scalable, a lot more impact for me because I can help so many people learn how to sell and also help entrepreneurs get, get great salespeople so they can remove themselves from sales calls or actually boost their revenue during launches. So we're going to break down. We're going to we're gonna go through the, the numbers of my offer. Sounds fun today, Heather? 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 Yeah, do it. All right, cool. So background story. Okay, I got to give you guys some background. Okay. So um, I know, so here's some important assumptions before we go in that I think we need to get really clear on so that we're all on the same page. Some assumptions is I know my offer or I know what value proposition I'm providing is of value to the marketplace because people have purchased it in the past before and there's some demand for it already right now. So I'm actually solving a problem in real life with an offer. And at the same time, I'm going to look to see how can I make this scalable and um, sustainable for the business. Okay. Um, so I think it's su- super important to cover. Anything else you think I should cover Heather before we, before we dive in? No, you ca- that's exactly what we need to talk about. Like we already know this offer, there's already a desire for it. There's already a market for it. We already know people are paying for it. What we're looking to solve is how am I structuring, delivering and pricing this offer so that it makes sense for sustainable Structured growth. Hmm. I love all those things. So let's start off with the structure for this for this offer, right? Um, so let's just say hypothetically, which is true, I have four or five people on a sales roster who are looking to get sales jobs, right? Um There's obviously two different structures that I can follow, right? There's permanent placement, which is pretty, re- pretty normal in recruiting. And then there's temp- temporary placement, right? So temps. Right. <laughs> wow. Um, let's talk through both of these. I think these are important to talk about. Um, let's see, long-term. Okay. And then temp. And I'm also writing notes, guys, because I'm always a student. So... Long term, what I was doing in the past was five thousand dollars per person. Okay, after um, a thirty day trial, what I found out, this is what's crazy, is which we could talk through is that uh, I met a guy who does fractional executive services for companies, and he was telling me that the average, the fee right now because of the Great Recession, the average fee for recruiting people is 25% or something like that, 25, 30% of their yearly income of successful recruitment. And beforehand, it was 18%, 18, 20%. Um, so the question is, do you think I'm leaving money <laughs> on the table with a 5K or should I reevaluate the placement fee based upon the scenario of each person? Like, like, there's obviously a gap here. I'm charging 5K. He's telling me industry average is 20% minimum, right? And so if an average salesperson makes, let's say, $80,000, 
I mean, damn, that's 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 some that's some that's some cash. Um, sorry, guys. Okay. Like, that's that's sixteen thousand dollars. There's an eleven thousand dollar gap here. What's your thoughts? Give me, sure. give me the run. There's a, there are an eleven thousand dollar gap from one person's opinion. Period. Mm-hmm. Let me get really clear with you on that. You've only talked to one other person besides me about this, and I actually haven't given you my opinion yet. So the gap is doing your homework. We know we know the we know the the need is there. We know the market wants it. We know the market will pay for it. Did we do our homework uh, for what we call general market averages? So here is one of the most interesting things that that happens in coaching and consulting across the board. Okay, and Desmond, I'm not. I'm going to call you out, but I'm not. Um, and <laughs> I've left this so that we could actually do this live with our pod people to show them that a everybody's human and b this is what's happening. So. We're going to take graphic design as, a, as an example, right? Graphic design, web design. For probably 25 years, there was what we call an industry standard pricing. And then the world of Fiverr and Upwork and I can get something done anywhere really started to evolve. The digital world started to get bigger. And all of a sudden, there really wasn't a standard for pricing. Okay. So in some industries, pricing standards have literally blown up. They don't exist anymore. They're just, they're misproportionate to what's possible. It depends on what, what area of the world are you in? Are you looking at industry averages? You could look in a different time zone in the U S and it would be different. Now with other industries, there is still a relatively close industry standard. Manufacturing sells a relatively good industry standard. Um, I'm sure there's a couple others. Manufacturing is the only one I can come up with off the top of my head. But sales is kind of in one of those um, gray areas. There's an industry standard for like the cost benefit analysis for publicly traded companies hiring on sales reps or like using a headhunter to recruit. Recruitment has got a relative industry. Now, if you look at smaller businesses, like small to medium businesses that are Anywhere from 250K to about uh, two, three million, there's not really a standard. So, have we done our homework? Did we dig in and say, okay, so if I surveyed 25, 35, 50 businesses, like, what'd you pay for your first sales rep? Did, did you do all your own training? Did you not do all your own training? Do you need a sales training inside of your company? Like, this is a multi tiered offer. So there's a vetting process on the company side. And then there would be a vetting process on the, it's either temporary, I need temporary sales help, which means it would be something you would house internally, or I need a permanent sales team member, which means somebody would be making that team member a salaried offer, whether it be commission-based or not. They're making them a permanent offer. Now that permanent offer comes to the contract. And as long as they stay inside of that contract, then you do it. It's like you get a you get two thousand dollars when they sign, and then if they stay for the first year, you get another eight. I'm making up numbers, but a lot of it's based on longevity. So it's less <laughs> about the placement fee and more about the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. If you look at uh, some of the older headhunting companies that went and sought out CEOs, uh, oh, what's that movie? There's a movie. There's a movie about this. Justin Timberlake's in the damn movie, and so is the pretty girl with the big eyes. We can reference it in the show notes. <laughs> Just think about it later. Friends with benefits. Friends with benefits. Got it. Yep. She's a headhunter, and she headhunts him to be the creative director for GQ. Okay, so she gets paid to get somebody there and have GQ say yes, and then she gets paid if he stays through the contract. So having something be performance-based is a really good example, like what you've gone through so far. But do I think that there is a gap in your pricing? Yes, I do not, however, think it's a gap in what you're charging. It's about building out the the intricacy of the offer structure and giving people multiple, multiple choices. So if you're working with smaller, closer to startup, like 100 to about half a million, 
they're a, they're not going to use a salesperson as often, but like a salesperson won't have as many hours. They might have a smaller offer. There's a lot of reasons for it, but you should have like a small package, a medium package and a large package. And then what we call the jumbo add-ons. Do you need more than the jumbo add-ons would be things like, do you currently have a good sales training and um and sales team like building like plan in place? Do you have all that stuff ready? If not, then you can add on putting white labeling my sales training and my sales team building in this place. What are you thinking? I'm just writing notes, girl. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. So no, welcome no. to the what? economics of building an offer because the truth is that <laughs> when you look at the money. So you have to look at it this way. Like if we were to, so I'm going to, I'm going to literally pause that whole thought process and reverse engineer this for people so they can see where I'm going. Okay. So if you want to take an offer where, that you've offered in a customizer, a one-to-one space, you already, you have to already have like proof of concept. You already have to have sales tests. This already has to work. Okay. You cannot be doing this before knowing that it works without a shadow of a doubt. But if you want to, if you want to put something into a more, streamlined, standardized, like purview, you're going to look at, okay, so if X amount of dollars come in and X amount of time goes out, what does that equal? Like if I want to make a million dollars and I'm willing to spend 10 hours a week, how long is the length of the contract? The amount of time per week, amount of time per month, whatever it, however you justify that. And then the cost of goods sold. So any on top of, you have to map out exactly what each piece costs in relative to how much money are you wanting the company to make? And you have to look at this from a perspective of, okay, and can we grow or am I capping myself? Like I'm willing to spend 10 hours a week with up to 10 people to make 10 million. Great. Could you ever is it even sustainable to be able to add more to that pot? Or are you going to have to duplicate yourself again? So knowing what you know now, reverse engineer your offer form. Yeah. So what I am, what at first glance, um, my tier system would be, because I think contrast is super important in offers coming from a guy who who creates offers for clients. Um, Contrast is important. And so I really like the temp, I like for, be fully transparent in terms of like economics. I like the temporary business model the most. So I'm going to drive behavior to the temporary, the tips, because I get to keep those guys and I can still, you know, if they do a job here, as soon as they're done, they're ready for another one. And that creates more velocity for the business model personally, rather than Mm -hmm. the long-term recruitment stuff. And so what I'm going to do is, um, based on industry standards in corporate, you're right. Corporate, it is 20%. So it's usually a $20,000, um, headhunting fee. If you find, uh, salespeople for, 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 for usual, you know, regular size businesses and in terms of medium and small businesses, uh, I think the average is, um, I know an industry standard is someone else is charging $10,000 for, for closers and, uh, you know, a few thousand dollars for, for setters, right. People who are not closing. Right. Um, and it's all mm-hmm. based upon a performance base, right? So performance guarantees. And so um, what I am looking to do is if I did do the long-term thing, I would probably charge $10,000 minimum because I would rather drive with the temps. And if it makes sense for them, if they want to hire someone full-time that take them from temp to full-time, then they could pay pay a ten thousand dollar flat fee if they agree to work. You know, obviously work for them, right? Um, and so for yep. my temporary, for so I think that's probably the, the smartest thing to do because it, it also it, it also mitigates the, and it also mitigates the risk for the client because they know that this person can perform because they did really well for them temporarily, right? So it makes sense mm-hmm. to pay. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so for my temporary business model. Now let's unpack this a little bit because this is the one I've been really trying to wrap my head around. Um, I believe that there should be some type of upfront fee, right? Something that says I'm committed. Yes. Right. A retainer, something where they have skin in the game 
and there's some accountability. Yeah, they get to retain case. they get to retain your services for finding them a closer. Period. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is for the temps, right? So um, temp, temp or permanent doesn't matter. There's always a retain. There's always a retainer to retain your services for you to do the footwork for somebody else. Boom. Period. Now, what that price is going to be? Oof. Let's break this down. This is fun now. This is getting real fun. Um, so, obviously, I don't want to spend the time. So, obviously, the retainment needs to be high enough where I can pay someone to do. To, so, I can pay someone to help me do all this stuff, right? Um, yes. And so, an operator needs to be 33% of whatever I charge. Right. In terms of fulfillment. So 33% of fulfillment goes to uh, operations. Um, so let's just say that if I want to, I, I want to get someone good. Um, mm, okay. So let's just say hypothetically, the goal is three, uh, three, cus- uh, let's, not, let's not do it like that way. If I want to hire someone full-time an operator, I probably need to pay them Six thousand dollars. Go for it. Okay. You don't base a product off who you think you're going to hire. You don't base your pricing off who you think you're going to hire. You hire based off the budget from the product. Mm -hmm. Period. Period. Because the scalability of that will change the available money to be dispersed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. If you're looking at a product like this, if somebody needs a temporary, then, okay, what what is industry average? Like, what's the average cost of hiring somebody to do sales temporarily? You have to see what does it cost somebody in their time? What does it cost them in their resources? And what does it cost them in commission? You add the things up. So here's average. So giving people back their time, if they if say it costs them 10 hours to hire somebody to do sales for a launch. They have to spend 10 hours of their time training. Well, that's coming off their plate. Now, if if each increment, if each um, monetary increment in a business, say each notch is worth $100, right? So for every sale, they, for every sale close, it's $1,000. So it's, it's 10 markers. Well, if a, if a $1,000 sale takes two hours to close, then each one of your markers is worth 3.5 times a single marker. So each hour is worth three and a half markers. Each hour is worth $350. So if you're taking 10 hours off of their plate, that's $35,000 or $3,500. Yes. I was gonna nope. be like, I like your, I like your math, Heather. I can, I can use yeah, my calculator any day. <laughs> so you got um, thirty five hundred dollars plus, mm-hmm. say, an average salesperson in a launch closes sales. So you're looking at, at for a round number about it for each salesperson, it costs somebody about. Uh, let's see, um, six thousand dollars a person. To, for a launch. And so that means a launch, it means they're doing sales for about eight weeks. So if you're doing sales for eight weeks and you need somebody's availability, somebody's full and undivided attention for eight weeks, cost you about $6,000 a person, maybe more. That's what they're, that's what they have would more or less pay out if they were doing it themselves. Mm-hmm. I think, so I if think it's also a, the if it's life a DIY is $6,000, then the done for you, 1.75. You're looking at 10 grand. DIY, six, done for you, 10, done with you, eight. Done with you means they do some of the work. They do, if they have their trainings and stuff in place, that means that you bring so many of them and they put them through the training. That also means that your performance guarantees change. 
depending on who's controlling the board. Do you see where I'm going with this? Yeah. So um, I like it. You really baked it off of opportunity costs, which is something that is funny. I actually Everything has to be baked off opportunity costs. It's funny how like when I like, if this was a client, like if a client came to me with this, I would literally like, I already have like a document of how to create an offer, but me doing it with myself, my own thing. It's hard. Like, it's like, it's almost like hard. It's hard. Honey, a cobbler always has holes in his shoes. Yeah. It's hard. Yep. Uh, like, yeah. So uh, another thing that, di- that, that we didn't talk about, uh, I like where you, where you get with that, but something that came up was like, even the, uh, like the likelihood of them even finding a closer, right? It, let's just say, that's like a perfect well, scenario. So you that's, find another, someone... that's another one where you, you have, you can put a metric to it, right? So if it's, if you take 10 hours to get a closer, are you close? Are you getting the right closer? It, co- yes. find, it costs you 10 hours to find a person. Then realistically, what is it? Um, one in three is the right one. I was so. going to say one in three. Yeah. 33% that they're actually going to be a good fit. Which means you take that that time, so into me, it's going to be thirty three hours. It will take them thirty three hours to actually find the right person. So then you're looking at your opportunity cost goes up by what five grand. Yeah, a nice, nice little, nice little penny. Okay, this is good. Mm-hmm. This is good. We're getting into some good stuff here. Um, lots of math. So now um, see, here where, where this falls in the economics of the offer is if you, if you do your math first and you break down, okay, here's all the pieces. This is where all it comes from. This also feeds you every single pain point that is logistical based fact. If you go out and look for a human, you're going to spend on average 10 hours finding a closer. And there's a 33% chance that that closer is the right closer for you which means on average, based on statistics, you're going to have to go through three to find your one. That means it's going to take you 33 hours to go find your actual right person. Yeah. Sometimes some people get it on the first try. Good luck. It's a one in 10 that I hear people get it on the first try. Gives you all your pain points, all of your talking points, all of your pain points, everything about your marketing comes from this. You build the structure of the offer and how it's going to work, what it costs you to do it. And then you build all of your pain points out at the same time. Like as you're building out your pain points, you're going to build out. Okay. So how, how do we do fulfillment? What's the execution on the backside? And what is, what is it going to take for me to get this executed in a one-to-one in a beta testing basis where I'm doing it. And then what is it going to take for me to execute this in a standardized manner where either the computer's doing it or somebody else's? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And what do I have to yeah, get wanna... to to get there? <clears throat> yeah. These are all the markers yeah. that go into the economics of building an offer because mm-hmm. business is good math. Yep. Business isn't, mm-hmm. it's not cute words. It's not great Instagram posts. It's not awesome marketing. It's not, it is a executable market ready product and a good math business plan. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is good stuff. Take Um, all of these things and you build out the numbers for this and then you go, okay, well, based on these numbers, like if this, if this vertical was just its own business, right. It had all of its own, it needed all of its own things. Then you would take, okay, so if we have a minimum of 10 clients all the time and it's XYZ dollars per, per closer and then for how long, it's like it's XYZ dollars for me to find you a closer and then it's XYZ dollars per week that you have them working for you. So there's a, re- there's a reoccurring revenue piece in that. That per week should cover... Um, Overhead behind it is paid to salary. This is overhead, what you provide to like actually have them working for that person. 
and then a 22% bump. That reoccurring revenue doesn't have anything else in it. None of the other business costs apply to that. Those other business costs are all held inside of your retainer. So it's just my costs plus 22, 22%. It costs, costs plus 22. Yep. Yep. Cost of services, goods and services. Um, cost good of goods sheet sold, term. not cost of goods, yes. not cost of goods produced, cost of goods sold. Good sold, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like actually sold. Okay. Um, with a twenty-two cool. percent markup, and that reoccurring revenue is guaranteed with no refund. The find you can have, um, they can have performance guarantees. They can have timing guarantees. They can have lots of things. From a sales perspective, those are the things that help sell it. But your reoccurring work revenue is, is a automatic deduction, no refunds, no nonsense, no arguing. And it has to have a really good close canceler end policy, period. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. Because once they have a person, there's the, the, those other guarantees don't have anything to do with it which means you have a trial period. I find you, it costs you X, Y, Z dollars for me to find you somebody and X, Y, Z dollars during trial period where you get to say yes or no, a week or two or whatever. And then it's ABC dollars per week. Boom, 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 boom. And definitely do this per week. Some people's sales cycles are five weeks, seven weeks. Like just do it per week. Don't do it per month. Mm-hmm. And especially with people doing launches, the way revenue comes in, it'll make it easier for people to say yes. Okay. So this is interesting. Um, I like where you're going mm-hmm. out with the 22% bump because I was thinking something like, so all right, let's, let's, let's talk this through. This is good stuff, Heather. I love this shit. Mm-hmm. Um, so, right. So there's a commission structure for sales, right? And incentive drives behaviors, particularly in sales, right? Sales people work harder when mm-hmm. they're hungry, they got to make money, right? And I want to create a culture yep. of making money, right? Not just, you know, being a pig and, 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 and being greedy. Um, so uh, what I'm thinking is a retainer for sure, probably at 25% upfront of whatever I like after we break it down the economics, what the contract value is, get 25% upfront um, to hold it. And then do uh, a retainer, monthly retainer, like you said. So let's say if I'm paying my salespeople um, a retainer to hold their time to the for the possibility to make more money, let's just say that I'm giving them a thousand dollars a month, right, as a salary, so to speak. Be available. Retainer, yep. To be available fee, I will then charge them one thousand. Two hundred and twenty dollars, or one thousand three hundred, to be you know super no, super simple. You won't pause. Nope. So if you're gonna give somebody a salesperson, people are gonna want. They're like, I need a salesperson that's available. You know, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week for eight weeks, or I need a salesperson that's available. This is where I say it's tiered. This is where you can. This will still be standardized, even if you think like, you can still keep into the standardization, no matter how custom customized somebody can make this. I need somebody available to take sales calls Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. So you need 12 12 hours a day, four days a week. How many many hours do you need? Or how much time do you need? You can break it down differently. You're not going to break this down like... uh, You can do it by the hour. You can do it by the day. You can do it by the week. Yep. You need three people available. Yep. Because when somebody's doing a launch, people are going to look at, okay, we're going to push. We know how many people are pushing to, and they should have a good estimated, like, this is about like the number of sales calls that are going to be coming in, or this is how many are coming in during the day, during the week. Like they should have analytics behind this or they're not ready. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, yeah, great. So you want open calendars for what? You want to be able to book how many sales people for how long? And then somebody, aka you for the first year, will be monitoring the scheduler to make sure that we're not running into. I mean, there has to be like, they have to have a developer ready to make sure that if we're having a, a visit site or a visit scheduler and a drop off, like a, an abandoned cart, why? Is it because times aren't available? Is it because 
they're just not sure is it because they have to put a, de- a deposit down and talk to somebody like there's reasons for this. That's why you charge a retainer to find somebody their sales closers because also you're also getting paid to go through and not audit, but audit how they're doing things and make sure that there is markers in place that don't argue your performance. You cannot give a performance guarantee unless you have um, solution markers in place to track it. It's a new one for me. Solution markers. Yep. Target's on fire today. <laughs> um, this is some good stuff, Heather. Um, I like the weekly thing. I think that's smart. And then you're saying base it down, basic to the base fundamentals of not person per time per month, but shifting to this is can be this is crazy, but shifting to how many sales calls per week and charging for that week every week, <laughs> like straight up week weeks, and even do even do sales payouts every week, I believe as well. Oh, um, okay. This is good stuff. So, uh, we're about to wrap this up here soon. Um, man, this was a good episode. Got me thinking girl. So my economics so far. So where I'm at is let's just say hypothetically, there's a hundred calls per month for 25 calls per week. Right. So if I have a day for five days a week, it's 25. And I want to charge $2,000 a month. So for 25 calls a week, I would charge $500 minimum just for just to have in the time availability. I could then distribute that $500 to whoever's taking the calls. I could maybe do like, I don't know, $400 to them for, for the week for taking calls or $300 to them for taking calls. I keep the 200 to pay, I don't know, this margin, right? Um, mm mm-hmm. In the business, but that in, the model, the business model, the economic model only works if you take the retainer and the reoccurring into consideration for the margin. Mm-hmm. So somebody comes to you and says, "I'm doing a launch and I need some temporary. I need, I think I need five temporary sales people. Okay, how many calls are you expecting? Um, we're expecting you know 25 a day for the next." For the next eight weeks. Okay. So you need a hundred, hundred percent of the time, the availability, you want 25 calls a day. Yep. Two salespeople can do that. Three salespeople can do that. And so you need me to find you three people and you're going to need them for eight weeks. Okay. So say it's 10 grand a pop to find them. So $30,000 for the humans and find you the perfect humans. Cause you may rotate through some and then $500 a week per person per week. So 1500 a week for eight weeks. What is that? 12,000. Okay. Plus 30. It's 42,000. Divided by 12. 3,500 a week. Because you have eight weeks of selling and it'll take you probably four weeks to set it up. And that's just the truth. Always give yourself four weeks to get get people integrated and toned in. Mm -hmm. If it takes less, great. If you could get that down to a science, awesome. But always give yourself a month. And this is a no-brainer if we could do a million-dollar launch. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, 42 grand is nothing if you're making, even if you do $500,000. Um, but still less than 10%. That's not including where, paying the people though. This is, this is where the difference, this is where the difference comes is you already have those people on staff. You're paying them thousand dollars a month to be open and ready. Okay. Period. Mm-hmm. Now that cost doesn't have anything to do with this margin. It does, but it doesn't. Your cost of doing mm-hmm. business, your salespeople will be inside of your overhead, your cost of doing business, not your profit and loss. They're inside of your overhead. It's like paying rent or your business license or your anything. It's your overhead. Mm-hmm. Your general business overhead would be their salary, that $1,000 a month, that retainer to keep them and ready. And then it's just slide somebody in, get them trained, test them out. If they work, great, they stay. Not slide somebody in, t- get them trained, test them out. That's why you give yourself a month because it'll take you three or four days to do it that with any one person. 
Mm-hmm. And they're that's definitely getting paid commission. Yep, and they're definitely getting paid. Now for they commission. they get paid a they get paid a commission from the company directly, which means they fill out their own their own W nine, and they get paid commission, but they're not getting paid anything but a commission. Got they're it. that their overhead salary to be ready to do sales is inside of your overhead. Does that make sense? Yeah, you know, it's different. So it's, it's not about a percentage of what the salesperson can close or what they make. Like that performance isn't part of the payout contract. That performance is a part of the, like a long longevity contract. Yeah, like hey, I'm your guy. Like I'm paying mm-hmm. you, and then they sign not competes and all the things. Um, so this is some good stuff. I love it. This is so good. And um, man, yeah, this is good stuff. Should we, shall we um, continue this? Uh, n- not tomorrow. Tomorrow we have a guest, but day after tomorrow. Yeah, we go. We go deeper because this all, this is going to be okay. done. It's going to be done this month. So we, I mean, has I love to, it. So right? let's let's ro- let's roll part two, yeah. and let's sh- let's actually show your offer on the video. Let's have yours written out, the structure of it, and let's go through part two. Show your offer, and we'll show the economic modeling for scaling it. Boom. Yeah, we'll do it on. We'll do it for the next one after the guest. So, yeah. guys, we made it to the end. We just went through some real play by plays in real time. And um, this was a lot of fun. So, if you thought, you thought this was super valuable, if you think someone get a ton of, of value from this, this episode, feel free to share it with them. Don't forget to leave us a rating, a review. And uh, if you want to come play on the sandbox with us, me, Heather, and Josh, whenever Josh returns, um, you can hit us up at campfirecapitalism.com slash guests and show us some love there and fill out the questionnaire. So um, it was great. Um, See you guys soon and uh, consume less and create more. Cheers. Bye, guys.